This is not a picture of the crane at the construction site, but it shows how a typical crawler crane might have a vertical component and then at the top extend horizontally outward. And then a cable can dangle down from the top. And well, as this cable extends downwards to pick something up, it starts to look like a loop antenna. We could account for this in our FDTD model as shown here. And this is what the group implemented for their study. In this case, they studied the electric field 20 centimeters away from the boom of the crane at this dot, uh, this electric, this green dot here, in order to study the total voltage potential that is being picked up by the crane, which they could do because they ran a simulation with a much higher grid resolution than we did. And from their simulation, they were able to show that the electric field, which is that they're plotting here, the electric field intensity immediately next to the crane can increase and reach a resonance when the loop of the crane is accounted for in the model. To solve this problem, they connected one end of the inductor to the hook of the crane, and the other end was grounded to a, suitably, a suitable point nearby. In other words, the inductors served to reduce RF coupling, both from the electric field coupling mechanism, as well as from the magnetic field coupling mechanism. After these changes were implemented on the cranes, the construction site was deemed safe again and construction resumed. Well, at this point we have reached the end of this design challenge on electromagnetic interference. Next time, we will start a new design challenge.